Hey everyone, Stax here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I got a Empire X-Men number one tie-in. It is written by Jonathan Hickman and Teeny Howard, and the artist is Matteo Bufagni and your color artist, Nolan Woodard. So as far as this book goes, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting much as far as the Empire tie-ins go. And I'll admit, I laughed out loud on some of the, uh, actually one of the white pages as far as the big title page, because me and my son are actually playing the video game that really it references. So, so in my mind, that was pretty timely as far as just just hitting the funny bone with me. And also, once this kicked off, I was like, whoa, where is this going? But first thing I need to do before I really dive into this is first hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and comment down below. Second, I need to go and just kind of do a quick just once over the world as far as Empire goes. I'll keep that short and sweet, but basically what it comes down to is that the Kree and the Scroll have formed an alliance and they are now looking to completely exterminate the Katati. Well, the Avengers jumped in because the Katati seemed like really nice people and ended up taking out both the Kree and Skrull fleets that had come to destroy them. Well, as it would happen to be, the Katati end up being huge imperialistic bad guys and are now trying to conquer the universe. And apparently a key part of that invasion starts in Genosha. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's get to the first part of this book. The book actually starts with, and it, it actually, I kind of almost gasped when I saw this. It's Doctor Strange, and he's talking to Wanda Maximoff. And it's clear that she has guilt, and she's trying to fix the wrongs of the decimation, and then eventually what happened with the Genosa genocide. And Doctor Strange actually has to tell her that he believes it's not possible, that he she can't go back and erase herself from history, that there's no way because of her powers, she's basically a touchstone in reality. And because of that, she can't erase herself. And that that actually brings up a lot of questions as to why Professor X, why Magneto allowed this event to happen, having the knowledge from Moira that it was going to happen. My thought was that always they were going to use it as a catalyst, that they were going to use it as a touchstone for their mutant agenda. But this suggests that anything doing with Wanda Maximoff may actually end up being an inevitability. But it does raise a whole host of questions, but getting back to the topic at hand, Stephen Strange basically gives her the advice that, look, you can't unring that bell. I suggest that you embrace your sins, let it consume you, feel your guilt, deal with it, and then go and ring a bigger bell. And that's what she does. For the next year, she allows this to consume her, and she sets off on a path to gather these enchanted items and constructs this mystical staff that she takes to Genosha. And once she arrives, she reveals her plan, and that's, you know, she can't ask for forgiveness yet. Not enough time has passed, and she thinks that even with enough time, she may be able to forgive herself, but... She makes it clear that she's not here on Genosha today for forgiveness. She's here for redemption, a greater good, a moral right, an act that eclipses any other, a resurrection. And she yells, mutants of Genosha, live. And she plunges the staff into the ground. And this raises all kinds of questions as far as mutant protocol on this page right here. I just was like... Holy cow, what did she just do? Well, as is the case, when you dabble in the mystic arts, things don't always go as planned. And when she comes to after this giant blast, she wakes up to look up and is absolutely horrified at what she sees. From there, we jump to the Katati invasion fleet, which is, I don't understand this tactical um, analysis here, the who, who their planners are, but they're gonna invade Wakanda and the staging area for it is Genosha. And I'm gonna tell you, these plant-based invaders, they're not gonna make it. They're gonna get their tails with because why, if you can lower your forces from space, would you put a invading force all the way into, for Wakanda, hundreds and hundreds of miles away in Genosha, and then unload your ground forces rather than doing that on the mainland? That doesn't seem very tactically sound. Anyways, the invading Katati army begins to move into Genosha, and when they do, they encounter the very first of the new local inhabitants, or should I say the old local inhabitants. They bring him up to this general who, who the, the guy's trying to talk, and he's just, rah, 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 rah. he's like, well, his, his jaw fell off. So they actually put his jaw back in place, and the guy begins to talk, this mutant zombie. 
And they do what anyone would do in this tactical scenario. They go and they try to garner some intelligence from him about the local populace. And so he asks, I want you to tell me about this island and if we need to concern ourselves with any of your kind. And the mutant here goes, oh yeah, you're pretty boned, plant man. This is literally the worst place on earth you could have landed. Everyone who lives here is a mutant. And they're like, a mutant? What's that mean? He's like, well, it's like regular humans, but with powers. And what are your powers, mutant? Well, my mutant name is Explodey Boy, and I blow stuff up. Watch. And Explodey Boy lives up to his name and blows all kinds of stuff all over the place. Now, right after he does this, somebody manages to slice off an arm, which he only feels as a tickle, and then you get a warning of there's something moving out there. And this guy looks at him and says, why aren't you dead? He says, well, actually, I am dead, undead, whatever. The same as everyone else who lives here. But that's not your real problem. Say the real problem is that of the 16 million mutants on this island who died, about 2 million of them were vegetarians. And with that, a wall of mutant zombies just come pouring forward at this plant army. So it is basically alien plants versus mutant zombies. I can, I can hear Crazy Dave right now going, <laughs> From there, we jump to Angel and Penance, who we find out have been left in charge over X-Corp. And while Warren seems right at home, Penance doesn't seem like she's quite got it. She's not on board yet. And she actually asks Magic, like, why are you here? I don't think we, I'm not sure we need security. And that's when Magic kind of drops the ball that I'm not here really for security. I'm just here to make sure you don't screw it up. And when things get a little bit heated and she's accused of spying, she's like, look, I'm not spying. I'm monitoring for redundancy. And for obvious reasons, this kind of hits Warren hard. He, he's he got his head down. He's kind of, he's ticked off about it. And Monet starts kind of digging in a little bit more too. And Magic just says, hey, look, if you, you look mad, want to go talk to Xavier about it? I've got the express train to Kokoa. Let's go. And with that, they bust into Krakoa and they walk in on Black Tom who is going off. And he's like, look, the gates are not sick. This is no sickness of the vine. And he makes it clear that something at the Genosian portals is causing major issues with the gates. And Charles says, look, we will, I will personally make sure someone goes and examines. And Charles starts the conversation with how went the meeting. And... Angel doesn't really hold back. He dives right into him and says, Charles, you're monitoring x for redundancy in secret. And it really comes out a few panels later when he says, look, we need x now more than ever. Did you really think I wasn't going to take this seriously? Do you really think that this isn't in my blood, that my family, my family, the family I chose, that I wouldn't take this seriously? And Charles stops him. He's like, whoa, hey, you misunderstand me, Warren. I don't think you would misuse any of our vast resources, money or pharmaceuticals or anything else. Those aren't my concerns. The resource I must monitor is you, Warren. We simply don't have enough good mutants, Angel. Even embracing the assistance of our former enemies leaves us woefully short on manpower. I just need to know if the x core venture is worth our time, because if it isn't, I need you somewhere else. That is why the redundancy was brought up. You, my boy, would never be redundant to me. But if brilliant minds like yours and Monet can be used elsewhere, we want to use you there instead. And that's when Angel asks, so what's Black Tom so upset about? Well, Charles briefs Angel up and he breaks out and he's got a plan. He says, look, the Genosian gates aren't working properly. We're going to investigate. I'm taking Monet, Magic, and myself, We'll be squad leaders. From there, we'll take, and Magneto stops him. He's like, whoa, whoa, you may take one more citizen. And Warren's here like, whoa, hold up. There could be thousands of forces out there. What, what are we walking into? But Magneto doesn't budge. He says, look, I know that Charles made himself clear with regards to our needs. He's laid down the law. Don't make me enforce it. You may take one citizen. Well, Warren Worthington III is no fool, and who does he take? Jamie Madrix, the multiple man. Once the team arrives in Genosha, they quickly start trying to investigate, find out what's going on, and Magic actually drops a, he a heresy. I can't say that word. Heresy. Heresy. Her heresy! If I yell it, I could say it. She drops a heresy warning and says, Look, I know the gates are supposed to be a big blessing, but it sure does seem we spent a lot of time teleporting around fixing these things. 
And the angel reminds her, look, it's a garden. You can't just turn it on and let it run. You have to tend to it. And right about that time is when a horde just starts rambling towards them and they realize real quick, they've got plant people coming their way and that these things aren't running, what are they running to? And Jamie Madrix throws in, or running from, and sure enough, they're running from the mutants. Well, Warren grabs Jamie and takes off in the air, gets him out of harm's way, and Magic and Penance go to work. First, they do some slashing through some plant people, and then they follow up the salad with some zombie meat. Once the team finishes tearing through the first wave, they immediately know that, hey, we gotta get to the gate. They rush down there to, I mean, because that's what they're there for. That's the mission to find out what is going on with the Genosian Gate. And once they get down there, they realize, basically, the thing has weeds all over it. At that point, Ileana's like, did you say weeds? Because I got a giant weed whacker right here. And Angel's like, whoa, hold up a minute. It's like diffusing a bomb. You cut the wrong vine and that whole gate is going to die. Whatever these aliens are, they're a hostile plant life and it's hostile to everything here on Genosha. So this could honestly take hours. And <laughs> Jamie Madrix is in the back like, you know what? I know what you need. About 60 unskilled hands with nothing better to do. Boom, my time to be a hero. So while Multiple Man does his thing, Angel gets up to get a better view of what's coming, and this time, it's zombies. His immediate concern is that this wave of zombies is going to actually trample the gate into the ground. That is when Penance points out that, no, trample it? They're Genosian zombies. That means they have an X gene. They should be able to go through this thing and rush into Krakoa. Well, it's right at that time that Jamie manages to get the gate back up, but he finds that his hand is covered in this green goop and he's trying to figure out what happened and right as the zombies are about to hit him and about to hit the gate this giant rushing wave of green nickelodeon slime slaps out over the zombies and covers them and who should step out of the gates but horticulture and they are being just as golden girls as they can be one of them's already talking about how i know it's a sin but these mutants they try my patience ladies and the old little you know which one. She's sitting there going, oh, except for that blonde hunk. I like his wings. He can sit. I'd like to sit him on my Christmas tree. Then the other one coming back saying, Augusta, don't be trashy. We need to be, we don't need to be trashy. We're experts. And with that, you have the old one once again ask, you know, we're horticulture and we're here because we know plants. And you know what makes plants grow, Blondie? A whole lot of bull. And then she says the cuss. But that's it, man. You got alien plants versus mutant zombies versus old ladies. And I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, man, not these, not the Golden Girls again. But I'll tell you what, I'm fine with it. I enjoyed them in the first one. I thought it was different. I thought it tied to the the plant-based theme that's going across the... Uh, the X titles with Krakoa. And you can go back and say, well, they beat down Sebastian Shaw and Cyclops. And yeah, but they got the drop on Sebastian Shaw. They depowered Cyclops. They was, it was, they basically jumped them. People got bent out of shape. Like suddenly the power level of these old ladies was that of standing toe to toe with the X-Men, which was never the case. But I liked it. I liked the introduction of some new characters. And if you don't take a chance on some new characters, you're gonna get stale. So I'm I'm actually enjoying these characters as far as some of the new ones that have been introduced in the Dawn of X. As far as the story goes, man, I was taken aback once you had the Scarlet Witch there. Once Wanda Maximoff showed up, I kind of was like, man, I what are they gonna do here? And then for her to go and when she drove that, that staff into the ground and told them to come alive, I was like, what is she doing? This could be a good thing, but this could also create a bunch of problems. And it's gonna really show, you know, what if somebody that was dead there on Genosha has already been resurrected on Krakoa and now you go into, you have two of them. Now that kind of solved itself possibly with the zombie thing, but if these zombies have the personalities of those individuals that, well, you know, that they were obviously before they got killed in Genosha and they've been resurrected, we still have that problem to some degree. Something else to think about is it's not just some other X writer writing this as a tie-in. This is Hickman writing on this. Now, Tini Howard was on it as well, which I'll be, I'm actually surprised that she was on it is because I thought the, I actually really enjoyed the book. So, and that doesn't always happen with the Tini Howard book. And I don't mean that as an insult. I'm just saying that 
um, going over to Excalibur, that's been a really hard one to follow on some of the storylines. The pacing hasn't been good and, and several other things that I've talked about over my Excalibur videos. But I thought this one was actually really good. It was well paced. It was fun. I really liked the dialogue between Angel and Xavier. And overall, I mean, I've, I enjoyed it. So, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Uh, I'm excited to get the next one, see where this is going. I may actually go grab some of the other Empire tie-ins. Uh, or actually go grab the main story because I, I really haven't been following that. Y'all let me know down in the comments if you have any interest at all in Empire. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, guys. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Take care out there. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think because I love to hear it. and love to try to get back with you in the comments. And, of course, leave a like. That just helps draw more views to the video and to the channel and helps this thing keep growing, guys. I, I sincerely appreciate you. Take care. Real Comics Tags, out.